Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Red Lion Controls, and today we are going to do a quick walkthrough of Crimson 3.1. Crimson 3.1 is our powerful development environment that you can use to create engaging user interfaces. It has powerful protocol conversion capabilities. It gives you the ability to connect to virtually anything in your facility and then deliver that information to anything else. So what I have up on my screen is the Crimson 3.1 environment. I downloaded it from www.redlion.net forward slash crimson, C-R-I-M-S-O-N hyphen 3.1. I downloaded that and installed it, and then I am going to create a new project. So file new. In this case, I do want to use a 7-inch graphite, but let's say I wanted to look at some of our other products. We give you an image, we tell you the basics and the orderable part numbers in this environment here. So our edge controller, as an example, uh, comes with data logging and an enhanced web server, um, and here's the orderable part number for that. So let's go ahead and do a 7-inch graphite database. Databases are what we call the configuration files for our various Crimson-enabled devices. And let's look at the three panes in front of us. The first one on the left-hand side is called the navigation pane. And the navigation pane, especially for new users to Crimson, we often recommend you just march down in order from communications to I.O. modules. And that's how you first develop your database. It's a good practice to get into to make sure you've thought of everything. Have you assigned the IP address you need to? Have you thought of all the protocols? Sometimes after you've created your data tags, you'll need to go back into the communications area because maybe you're passing a data tag from something on a serial RS-232 port to something on a Modbus TCP IP port. Whatever it is that you want to do, it's probably possible from within this navigation pane. So the first area is communications. This can be um, shortened or you know, expanded as much as you want to give you more visibility to be able to see the different things in each uh, area. Next is data tags. That's where we can create the various data tags. This is integer um, or floating numeric tags, flag tags, string tags, and then we have a basic tag. Display pages, that's where we'll create our uh, user interfaces. Programs is where we would do C-like programming, and in future episodes you'll see me do a little bit of that so that we can have values changing while we do other stuff on the screen. A web server, which will enable uh, so that we can look at our HMI from anywhere. So, you know, through a web browser we'll be able to see the screen of our HMI data logger, security, SQL queries, control, which uh, is our Crimson control engine, a 6.11.31 engine that enables you to program in a variety of languages that you're already familiar with, and then I.O. modules. You'll see I.O. modules with the Graphite products. We have an extensive uh, family of modules, everything from PID control to, you know, digital input, output, RTD input. So that's the navigation pane. And if you've been paying attention, as I click on these various things on the left-hand side, we see the middle section change. That middle section is called our editing pane. The editing pane, in many cases, will have multiple tabs and so we'll walk through in future episodes what these different tabs mean but this is where you'll edit the various characteristics of things that you have selected on the left hand side on the right hand side then is our resources and the resource pane delivers to you things that you might want to use in the editing pane. So as an example, if we wanted to put one of those numeric data tags and we wanted to put the value of that tag on our display page, we could expand this the same way we did the left hand side. We see data tags and here they are. I can just click and drag this over to my screen, resize it, and if I zoom in, we can see that tag one is now present on my screen. So navigation pane, editing pane, and resource pane. 
We obviously have a toolbar at the top and there's a lot more you can do. But for now, we're going to go ahead and save this project. So I'm going to go to File, Save As to name the type of hardware that this database was intended for. The great thing about Crimson is we can take a database maybe for a 7-inch HMI and we can scale it up or scale it down to our 10-inch or our 4-inch uh, HMIs from within Crimson. So this way you know what you're starting from. So let's call this one G07 Web Example. And you'll see that the extension is CD31. I'm going to hit save. And there we go. There's the first bit of Crimson 3.1. Stay tuned for future episodes with more information.